So, Father God, I thank you for today. I thank you for every person who's going to participate in this webinar, in this time with you. I thank you for the wisdom and the revelation, the understanding, the knowledge, and the might and the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, Father. I thank you for guiding and directing, Holy Spirit, what happens today. I thank you. I thank you for insight. I thank you for hungry hearts. I thank you, Father, for deliverance that's going to happen today for your people. I thank you, Father. I thank you that this is going to go forward for anyone and everyone who watches this video, who participates with a heart full of love. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that they're going to receive deliverance today. I thank you for that, Father. I praise you and I honor you for it, Lord, because you're good. You're always good. Thank you. Well, I welcome each one of you. And we have work to do today. And it's a continuation of last week's work. I hope that you've been working on um, your, what do I want to say? It? That you've been working specifically on generational hatred, anger at God. This is very, very real. Because I've been crying out to the Lord, why are your people unable to believe you, to believe your word? Why do they struggle so? in knowing that you're good. Why do they still believe that you withhold good? That lie, that lie that holds us in captivity, where we can't believe that you're a good father. And as I've been meditating on this, I recognize, you know, God, Father God, is the only God that dared to call himself Father. All the other gods, they had all different names. But who could take on the brawl and the burden and all the father wounds of the ages from generation to generation, but the heart of Father God, which is why we can cry out, Abba, and know that he's our daddy, he's our papa, and he loves us so much. Now, my, my relationship with the father is very, very sweet and very real. Going back to Brownsville, I had an experience at Brownsville about the love of God. And we were standing outside. There was no room for us to go in. And it was raining. And we were under these tarps, these little tents with the TV set. And they sang a song. And to this day, I don't remember what the song was. But in that song, I fell to my knees in the mud put my face right down to the ground. And I was weeping because of the love of the Father that overwhelmed me. And in that moment, he took me into his Father's heart of love. And it was this incredible place of golden, liquid love. And he called me there often. And he told me to take people there and when I go there, I literally swim in his heart of love. And I get covered in this incredible gold. And so many times when I go, I sit on his lap. And I'm about two or three, I'm weaned. I'm a weaned child. And a weaned child, I just lean into his chest and listen to his heartbeat. A weaned child asks for nothing, is totally content. You know, we have so many struggles with Father God because of heart wounds. And these are the wounds of our fathers, because all men are broken. Broken men break their children, who break their children, who break their children, who break their children. And should we be surprised that we find it so hard to believe that God truly loves us? And I remember one time as he was talking to me, and he began asking me questions because we have this fear that we're not good enough and we can't really, really, he's, he's judging us or he's not pleased with us in some way. And when I sit on his lap, I'm this toddler, this, you know, two to four year old. And he asked me questions about how a father and a mother feel about that little child. And he said, you don't have to do anything. I just delight in your presence. I delight in your smile. I delight in your laughter. 
I just like delight in you. And it's real important that we come to the place that we know that we're so loved. And everything that is blocking love, everything that is blocking the reality of the love of Father God and the love of Jesus Christ and how much we are loved. And because we're loved, how much we can believe him and trust him. We can believe him. We can trust him. His word is yea and amen. And I can believe him because I know his great love. I know he doesn't lie. He's not a man. He's not going to betray me. And because of this, I can trust him with my life, with my family, with my future, with my grandchildren, with every aspect of my life. I can trust him. So everything that keeps us from trust is what we have to deal with. And we have to forgive our fathers. We have to forgive every failure. So, Father, we step into the mercy court right now. We step in. We ask permission to step into the mercy court. And we come with thanksgiving in our heart because you're a good, good father and we can trust you. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you that all of our sins have been covered in the blood of Jesus. That when you look at us as we stand in court, you see us through the blood. We thank you, Father. We thank you that Jesus, Paul said, in my weakness, you show yourself strong. And we're just praise the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We praise and we honor you, Lord. And we just ask, Father God, right now, I'm asking to come in on behalf of everyone who's watching and will ever watch this video to forgive our fathers, to forgive our fathers and both our mothers' and fathers' lines and how they have wounded and how they have caused such deep deep father wounds in our heart. Father, we confess the hatred of the father, the hatred of the abandonment, the hatred for the abuse and the molestation. We confess, Father, for the verbal abuse, the emotional abuse, the physical abuse, for all the abandonment, Father, we come before you. I come before you, Father, and I ask forgiveness for all the abandonment and how the abandonment impacted our families, impacted our mothers and our fathers, impacted our lives, impacted our children for the failure of fathers and husbands. We come before you purposely, Father, to forgive and to ask that this bitter root against fathers be removed from our hearts that is blocking our ability to trust your love, and to trust you. Forgive us. Forgive us for projecting on you the brokenness of our fathers. Forgive us for creating a harsh God in our minds. Forgive us for creating a God that is distant, a God that doesn't, isn't aware of my sorrows and my pain. Father, I'm asking forgiveness for all the ways we've projected and created a God, Father God, in the image of our broken fathers. Father, I am requesting that that idol in our life be destroyed. I'm the, every bit of it, every shred of it be destroyed. Is anyone seeing something? I'm having a sense of I'm seeing all these idols and I'm seeing this large hammer of God coming down and crushing them. Just crushing them and crushing them to, to ash, to dust. Oh, Lord. In the Old Testament, when they crushed the golden calf, 
They took the dust of it and they required the people to drink of it. I'm asking for all the bitterness that is in our souls, in our DNA, all the bitterness to be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Cleanse us. Cleanse our minds. Cleanse our emotions. And cleanse our hearts. Cleanse us, O oh Lord. And I am requesting a release of the knowledge of Father. Not only this knowing, knowing you, knowing you, that intimate knowing. This is what I'm requesting, Father. That intimate knowing. I thank you for that, Father. And I ask that this day be recorded in all of our books. I thank you for that, Father. The, um, I saw the judge stand up, then this huge gavel, gavel come down, and I heard the Lord say, the judge say, enough is enough. So we're going to exit the court right now. We're stepping back out. Thank you, Father. All right. Anyone have anything they would like to say or see what they saw? We're going to be in and out of court today. He has much he wants us to do. Raise your hand. I'm really undone. I wasn't expected to go there, but God was. God knew. God really knew. God knew. All right, all right. Now I can go into, did someone raise their hand? No, nope. no hands are up. I don't know if you're like I am, just totally undone. You'll notice I didn't ask the great cloud of witnesses in because once I set up court, I expect them all to show up when I step in. It's, it just makes it so much easier when we do that. And we've already called for the great cloud of witnesses last week. And this is just a continuation of what we did last week. This is not, it's in God, there is no time or space. And we're just stepping back in and everything that we had established last week. I want you to understand that, that when you step back in the court, you just, you just step back in. If you've established it with a great cloud of witnesses, they're there for you. They're here with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I saw an image of a man bound by grave clothes. And I knew that this is what's binding the people of God. And I, I've really, really been crying out and asking, why? Why, Lord, can you, do your people not trust you? Why are they double-minded? And that's where he gave me that information about the... Um, the anger at God. And there's a couple other things we have to look at. I've got them all written down here. It says we've got to repent for the motives of our heart. You know, unless you pick up your cross and follow me, you have to deny yourself. And we're living in a society where the cross is not popular, where repentance is not popular. And denying ourself is our self-life. If, if you want to protect your self-life, if you want to keep it, you're going to lose it. If you lose it, 
you're going to gain so much more. So we really have to, in our own personal time, I want you to really, really get before the Father and say, show me every place that myself is still ruling, where I'm still on the throne of my heart, where I have not allowed you to be established. You know, it's lordship. It's lordship. It's lordship. Lordship means he's king of kings and lord of lords, and he's the only one that sits on the throne of our lives. Now, he had told me that I had to go to the two courts, the court of cancellation and the court of divorce. So he gave me more information over this past week. And we're, gonna, we're going to start in the court of cancellations. Um, so we're going to step back in. And I thank you, Father God, that all the great cloud of witnesses are with us. every one of them, including the patriarchs of old, Moses, David, all the patriarchs, Father, all those who trusted and believed in you. I thank you that you've given us access to the heavenly realms, that we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. So we're asking permission. I'm asking permission to do a class action court case on behalf of everyone who watches this video. And we're going to go into the court of, we're asking permission to enter the court of cancellations. Just a little aside before we step in. In the court of cancellations, this is where we cancel all the oaths, the vows, the blasphemy against God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in our bloodlines. When we do our bloodlines, it's everyone related to us by blood, marriage, and adoptions in our own vows and oaths, our own inner vows and oaths. This is where we cancel all the slander and the gossip, we ask for those to be canceled that have come out of our mouths, where we have murdered people with our tongues. This is where we cancel all the witchcraft in our bloodline. All the fetishes, sacrificial offerings, spells, potions, curses. All of this we're going to be canceling, especially we're going to cancel. We're going to cancel. So we step in to the court of cancellations humbly before you just judge. I'm seeing a Bema with three judges, and I'm seeing these huge, huge angels standing on either side of the bench. My sense is I'm climbing up to one of those pulpits they had in the old European churches where the minister would preach from, but it's just to get closer to the bema so that my face can be seen. I come humbly before the just judge of the universe on behalf of everyone who will ever watch this video. And we recognize the guilt in our bloodlines, in our DNA. For every, all the ungodly oaths and vows, inner vows, 
cursing blasphemy that has been spoken out of the mouth, out of our own mouths and the mouths of anyone that's related to us by blood, marriage, and adoption. We recognize we are guilty that these words are still echoing through the canyons of time. And we recognize, we, we say, our tongue has been used to set on fire. It's been used for evil with gossip and slander. And this is in the generations, Father. Oh, Father, the number of people that have been murdered by our tongues in our generations, Father, I come before you. And I say, we are guilty. We are guilty. We are guilty of murdering others with our tongues, with our curses, with our spells, with the witchcraft, loosing fetishes and potions. We are guilty of sacrificial altars. Oh, Father, I'm asking for a cancellation of every word, every sound, every vibration that has ever been released from the lips of anyone in our generations that are in our DNA. We're asking for a total cancellation by the blood of Jesus Christ. Also, the cancellation of every prophecy of darkness, every prophecy that has been spoken over us, even in this time and in this age, that did not come from your heart, Father, that is causing confusion. Every word, every false teaching, we're asking it all to be covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. To fall to the earth is dust and has no power to continue. And I request the demonic cords that have been released against us and against our DNA, against everyone related to us by blood, marriage, and adoption, that they receive a cease and desist order. Thank you, Father. I ask all this be recorded in the books of heaven. If you're seeing anything, please write it in chat. I heard the judge say, enough is enough. I want my people free. Oh, Annie, yes, I saw the fire. I saw like this incredible fire just, just like burning before him. I didn't know what was burning, but I knew something was being burned up. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Okay. Whew. Thank you, Father. We're going to step into the court of divorce now. We're going to humbly leave the court of cancellation. We come out, we come out, we come out with humbly and thanksgiving in our heart. We ask permission to enter into the court of divorce. Before we get in there, before we say anything, we're going to be divorcing ourselves from ungodly elders in our DNA. 
these could be priests, these could be the people in our bloodlines, you know, the whole ancestral worship. These are elders, and they hold us in captivity because they gave the DNA, and they placed it on altars, and those altars hold us. So we're going to ask for a divorce from the demonic altars. We're going to ask a divorce from all the sorrow, the terror, the trauma in our DNA, the hopelessness. And he was even showing me the word curses that have been loosed against us by others. In the court of cancellation, we are dealing with our own generational stuff we've done. In the divorce here, we're divorcing ourselves from all of those curses. These would be the curses that are coming through Freemasonry. This is the curses that's coming whenever anyone leaves a false religion. You know, in Islam, there is a tremendous backlash against those who become Christian. In Hinduism, in Buddhism, in so many of the religions of the world, even Catholicism, there is a tremendous backlash against you if you dare leave the faith. And there is cursing that is done. So we're, this is where we're going to divorce ourselves from all of those false religions that are in our bloodline. And any title deed or ownership to those false religions. Who? Okay. I ask permission to step into the court of divorce. Looks very much like the court of cancellation, but this time there is an angel army standing behind the judge and all their swords are drawn to sever. Divorcing literally means a severing, a complete and total revoking nullification of any claims to a person. So, Father, I am requesting on behalf of everyone who watches this video, club court class action lawsuit, I'm coming on their behalf requesting a divorce from every ungodly elder in their bloodline, in their DNA, by blood, marriage, and adoption. Every tendril, every root, I'm asking that it just be totally consumed with fire, that it has not a twig, not a tendril be left in us, not a tendril be left in us of any influence from ungodly elders, either in our bloodline or elders that were worshipped and were honored and respected in the different false religions our family were engaged with. We're cutting off all of their influence and control this day from our DNA. This is what I'm requesting, Father. I am requesting that every demonic altar that has been established over our lives, that our DNA be severed from that demonic altar. For we have a new creation in Christ Jesus, all former things have passed away. We are a new form of being. We are beyond human. It was homo sapien DNA that is upon that altar, but we have the very DNA of God in us right now. And we are putting a claim on this DNA. And I am requesting that the DNA of the fallen man in my body, in my family, in my generations be severed from us that we can walk in who we are, that we can become the manifested sons and daughters of the Most High God. Ooh. I request that all the sorrow, the terror, the trauma, the hopelessness in the DNA, all that has been attached to the DNA that has influenced our soul, 
It has influenced our heart and our ability to love and our ability to trust. I'm requesting the blood of Jesus to wash our DNA, to cleanse it, to remove all of the debris, all of the debris that is affecting our children and our grandchildren, that is affecting our brothers and sisters and our mothers and fathers and aunts and uncles and cousins. Everyone related to us, we're asking for a cleansing of it, Father, that they can be free. That they can be free. Wash us. Wash us. Wash us. May our DNA of everyone who's in Christ begin to sing with the resonance and the frequency of heaven. May we begin to vibrate with the very vibration of Almighty God and with light. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> Father, I ask a divorce also from all Eastern religion, Eastern mysticism, from all yoga, from everything Tai Chi, any kind of using the postures of the East for exercise. Father, I come before you and I recognize it's an abomination. It's a form of worship of those gods. And I am asking a severing, a severing, a divorcing of our body, soul, and spirit from the influence of the East. And we're very quickly, we're going to step out of this court and we're going to step quickly into the court of the title deed of ownership. Father, I bring before you everyone <coughs> who is called by your name, who has received the blood of Jesus Christ, who has been born again from above by the spirit of the living God, who has accepted the death burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin and for the resurrection of their own spirit out of death. Father, I bring before you all of these and I ask that every title, deed, ownership claim, and lien against their life be canceled by the superior ownership of Almighty God for the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. And we, out of our mouth, say we belong to Jesus Christ. We are in him, and he is in us. And on the basis of this, I'm asking for all legal documents in the, in the books of hell be utterly consumed with fire, that they no longer have any claim, any ownership, no enslavements, no enslavements of any way, shape, or capacity. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. I'm seeing like a flood of the blood of Jesus just washing us, just washing our, washing us, just washing us, just washing us.
I request a release order to be issued by the court for all of us who are caught in a region of captivity, that the angelic hosts go forth with their keys and release, release us from that region so that we are free to enter into the love of the Father. I request that all the decrees of hell that have given them the right to be imprisoned, that all those decrees be canceled and overturned by the blood of Jesus Christ. You said you'd show me a man that was bound by grave clothes and you told me call my man forth from the grave. So just as Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. On behalf of the Lord God Almighty, I cry out, Lazarus, come forth. Come forth. Come forth into life. Come forth into truth. Come forth into redemption. Come forth into salvation. Come forth. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Elements of communion so we can finish this with communion. I also believe you need some anointing oil. This was very, very powerful today. I am totally undone. Um, I know I'll be pulling myself back together in just a little bit. We've got oil here. So are we ready to begin again? Please either raise your hand or type yes. Okay, getting lots of different people are saying yes, okay. All right. So we have the elements of communion. We will take our communion. It's very, very important. Always use communion when you finish any kind of important work in the, in the heavenlies, any kind of prayer work. It's our covenant. It's our covenant of life, and it's important, very, very important, that we continually remind ourselves and remind the host of darkness to whom we belong and that we are part of the covenant of life. I also have anointing oil. The one that Dan just hand me is the Song of Solomon's anointing oil. So we're gonna start with our communion. Father, I thank you that you've given us the finest wheat that was crushed in the body of Jesus Christ to give us strength and wholeness, body, soul, and spirit. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquity and the chastisement for our peace is upon him. He took the stroke due. He took the punishment due. I thank you for that, Father. And by his stripes, we were healed. Healing is the children's bread. And I thank you. I thank you that he was stripped naked so we could be clothed in the robes of righteousness. I thank you that he was silent so we could speak. I thank you that we are the fruit of his travail. We are the fruit of his travail. And he looked beyond the shame and the reproach of the cross and he saw us. 
and he endured it. He embraced the cross for us. So we're so grateful to be part of this body. We are part of his body. He is in us and we are in him. And we take and we eat. We take and we eat the very strength and life that is in the body of Jesus Christ. And we properly discern your body in all, every member that's a part of your body. We rejoice in everyone that's a part of your body. And we thank you that we are a part of your body. And we remember, you say, do this in remembrance of me. Remember my death until I come again. Remember what was accomplished by my death. What brought life to you even yours. So we take and we eat of the life that is ours in Christ Jesus. Amen. And I hold up the cup of the covenant, the cup of life. And you told us to do this in remembrance of you. And I put Father God in remembrance. Father God, you said, Plead your case, put me in remembrance so that you can receive justice. And I put all of hell in remembrance of what was accomplished at Calvary. What was accomplished when Jesus went down into hell and publicly humiliated all of you. I put you in remembrance that of the blood that has purchased us, that has ransomed us out of the slave market of sin. We've been ransomed out of every enslavement by the blood of Jesus Christ and translated into the kingdom of the Son of Love. Oh, I thank you for the cup of life. I thank you that we can partake of the life, the very life, the blood. The life is in the blood. And we take and we drink of the very life of Jesus Christ, the very resurrection life that quickens and makes alive our mortal bodies. We thank you. We thank you that we have faith to believe. We can believe your word. We can believe that what you say is yea and amen. And all your promises are true. Amen, amen, amen. We take and we drink. I want you to take oil. I don't care if it's olive oil or cooking oil. I don't care whatever you have available. And I want you to anoint your forehead and seal what God has done today in the spirit. That mark, that seal of God. He said he has marked us. He's given us the Holy Spirit as the down payment of who we are and to who we belong. Father, I'm asking that this seal be our identity. Seal our minds, our emotions, our souls. So we are no longer identifying with the old man, but we identify with you and you alone. Thank you, Lord, for that. Whew. We thank you for what you've done today, Father, and we're just asking in your great mercies that we will see the fruit of this. I keep on hearing the Lord say, enough is enough. He wants his people free. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I think we'll do our discussion and questions and comments here. You want to seal? Yeah, Dan, I'm going to let Dan seal the work already. <clears throat> Father, we ask that every word that was spoken today be sealed for time and eternity. We ask that these words be recorded in the books of heaven. We ask that the angel armies be re released on our behalf so that we see the blessing of the Lord 
that makes us rich with every spiritual gift in heavenly places that is legally ours by right of eternal covenant with Almighty God. We seal this work in the blood of the Lamb by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God. We declare according to Isaiah 47, Isaiah 55, 11, that every word in agreement with the will of the Father shall not return empty without accomplishing what he desires and without succeeding in the matter for which it was sent. We declare that the Holy Spirit's breath, Zoe, life is upon these prayers. We declare that the enemy shall not release against our lives or our families any curses, counter curses, strategies, or retaliations against our health, marriages, children, grandchildren, finances, ministries, businesses, property, destiny, or well-being in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. If you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. Um, I'm going to lower all hands and then raise your hand. Okay, June, I'll allow you to talk and I'm going to unmute you. Okay, June. Um, I had, um, I had a picture of the Lord holding the heart and it was, it wasn't a clean heart. No, it was, it was a black heart. Um, but I felt in it the heart of the Lord's desire and heart is he wants to give us a new heart. And um, I really felt an anointing as well as, as you were praying there, Jackie. Uh, the other thing I saw was the picture when you said about uh, cutting the, um, uh, the religions, the false religions, and I, the one main person I saw was Shiva. I saw Buddha, but it was Shiva that was cut. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt the Lord gave me Isaiah 22, where it talks about, and verse 15, where it talks about Shiva. It talks about uh, Shebna. Shebna, yeah. Is Shebna yeah. Shiva? Shebna. Yeah. But it says um, to Shebna, who is over the house, and say, what have you here, and whom have you here, that you have hewn a sepulchre here? I see a hues himself, a sepulchre on high, who carves a tomb for himself in a rock. And it goes on, and I just believe that the Lord um, says, I will call my servant El Elkaim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with your robe, and strengthen him with your belt. And it goes, and I just feel the Lord was saying that this is what he's doing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that goes on. It's the key of David. Yeah. And the authority of that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, June. Do you have anything else? Anything else, June? No, I think that, that was really it. It was just... I just felt with him looking at the heart and the heart was black, mm -hmm. but it was his, it's his heart's desire for us to come into that place to receive all that he has for us and to cleanse us. Yeah, I just, his compassion and his love for us, it would just overwhelm me really. Well, I think all of the things we were dealing are is what's been keeping us from believing in his true love. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you, June. I'm going to mute you. Anyone else want to speak? Okay, Meryl. I love to. I'm going to unmute you, Meryl. Okay. Meryl? Can you hear me, Jackie? Yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm just uh, moving on from what, you're, what you've been doing and, and just give the Lord great thanks in, in humility because you've been directed by the Holy Spirit to take us on this journey um, to deal with the, the hearts that are hard, to deal with our black hearts, as Juna said. But there is a real stripping away, piece by piece. I really felt, um, in fact, personally, I'm very, very shaky at the moment, so I can't speak much, but... He is unraveling us. 
and um, so often we understand we understand that we are, we are identified by the garments that we wear. I think about the Queen of England; she would never walk around in anything that wasn't uh, magnificent, with the hats and the gloves, and you know she wouldn't go in jeans and things like that. But we would recognise her for who she is. But it's the same for us, and we have been wearing these garments filthy garments but some not so some that looked okay but it's like god is just holy spirit says i'm, I'm going to unravel the whole shoot the whole lot it's being unraveled because it's all to do with our identity and our false identities that have been in our generations and everything that you brought forward for us and i just want to give god praise it's such a privilege and it's very humbling and I, I don't know how everybody else is feeling, but it's this sense of being absolutely undone. And thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you so much. Um, if he unravels these garments, then he is going to give us new garments. Mm-hmm. We're going to be looking very, very different. But I just sense this is a time thing. It's going to take quite some time for many of us. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, everybody. I'm just as undone as you are this week. Dear Lord. Just, just as undone. <laughs> Thank you, Meryl. Anyone else want to speak? It's, I know it's hard to speak. I really do know that. I really, really do. The, um, I, I was earlier today, and this is just, I'll, I'm going to stop the, recording. It's over as far as I'm concerned.